السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ladies and gentlemen let's continue our computational fluid dynamics CFD tutorials in this video we're gonna talk about a very interesting topic is cooling the uh, PV panel or cooling PV panels really this is a very uh, interesting topic uh, so if you watch my previous videos so let's see where PV cooling answers. So you'll find here uh, my two videos uh, cooling a PV panel photovoltaic using grips, fins, and thermal simulation. I did not, I did not, sorry, I did not use uh, fluent, I used only the thermal or mechanical analysis in it. So, uh, also, I guess I've validated it against the paper and uh, another tutorial cooling a PV solar panel using ANSYS thermal and fluent. We coupled between the uh, thermal and fluent, so it was a fluid solid interface. So, today we're gonna carry out some simulation but using solar ray tracing for people who don't wanna make any coupling or don't wanna. Uh, do not want to use the thermal analysis so let's start before we start we have here uh, this uh, reference is very interesting reference for undergrad people or the or even postgraduate students I also still this moment I uh, use it and I uh, find many useful things very uh, easy uh, to be understood and it is not uh, the language in this reference really is very simple you'll find lots of uh, very good things natural convection and the radiation heat transfer and of course you have to see the solar radiation and the differences between the other radiations models also we have here ANSYS fluent theory guide you will find here lots of things modeling radiation you'll find the theories behind the radiation models we only we're gonna only use the solar load so it's gonna be here it's gonna be here yes modeling radiation solar load ANSYS fluent provides a solar load can be used uh, to calculate radiation effects from the sun's rays that enter a computational domain notice that there is a difference between the sun's rays and the other uh, for example you have uh, a heater in your room inside your room there is a heater we have to use the equations of the heat transfer by radiation for by radiation and Boltzmann the equation the simple equation Q by radiation and convection we will find a, a specific equation yes the there is an equation for this is Stephen Boltzmann You will find lots of videos illustrates the things. So anyway, it's not our deal right now. So to raise enter conditional domain, two options are available for the model solar ray tracing and do the radiation ray tracing approach is a highly efficient and practical means of applying solar loads as heat trusses in the energy equations. In cases where you want to use the discrete ordinate model to calculate radiation effects within the domain, an option is available to supply outside beam direction and intensity parameters directly to the do model. The solar load model includes a solar calculator utility that can be used to construct the sun's location in the sky for a given time of day, of day, date, and position. Solar load is available in the 3D solver only and can be used to model steady and unsteady flows. So uh, the issue, the only issue that I faced with the solar load model is that you cannot use it if you have uh, conformal meshes or conformal walls, non-conformal walls. So 
solid racing and non-conformal words rules the trace racing to different lengths and non-conformal interface here is the subject or I'm currently modeling box I have the same problem my project drop so I give up this with answers okay So find something here, I guess. So let it racing. Okay. Anyway, I do not remember where it is. So we're gonna see the conformal mesh. Yeah, both are mesh the non-conformal interfaces. So if you use the conformal interfaces, it is not gonna uh, work. So I'm gonna show you these details right now. Okay. So anyway, to save the time, if you remember the uh, the same model I used in the previous uh, videos, here is the gonna see the paper okay here is a very interesting reference to get the solar loads or the so from the solar equations it's quite different from the uh, heat transfer equations by Boltzmann okay here we'll find the solar sun the solar uh, rays and the angles the solar angles to calculate the radius okay so we have here uh, the paper that I used in the previous tutorials, the efficient work in the photovoltaic panels by using air-cooled heat sinks. If you remember these layers, I used them, but I dropped the uh, ARC because I faced problems in meshing. Okay, and here is the heat uh, sink and the air channel. Okay, so it is the same model all the layers here five one two three four uh, five the bvf or the tiddler i guess so we have here five bodies okay here is the deal if you go and make a mesh for this uh, it is not gonna work in fluent okay this is the first uh, problem so now here is the deal we have to make something first of all I'm gonna make the model this model here the author did not use all these layers he only used the PVC layer okay so let's do this right now I don't want the glass the PVC yes and all things no okay so I have here this plate with the thickness and I have it like this. What I'm gonna do is to just extrude this to this direction, 100 millimeters, like the paper I guess. Uh, 10 centimeters just generate we have two bodies PV cell is at frozen and this is at material of course we have two bodies so what I'm gonna do is to suppress this body why because I wanna now use the solar load if you use these uh, two bodies uh, with the PV cell and uh, sorry here let's name here is the fluid okay I make it fluid okay we have two bodies but now I only I'm gonna use this body 
I cannot use the solar ray tracing if I do not suppress this. Why? Because there will be inner phases. And here is the problem. If the fluent solver detects that there are interfaces, I mean many bodies and stick together, the solar load do not, does not work. That's why I suppressed this. So how to define the PV cell? I only now have this fluid. So let's close this. This is Gabriel's uh, PV. Uh, this is the name of uh, my uh, friend. So this uh, model, he is working on this model. That's why I put his name on it. So let's see here, we have only this fluid. There is generate a mesh. Of course, you have to uh, make a, a carry out a mesh depend study, and of course, you have to choose the optimum mesh size. I'm gonna make a random right now just to uh, be able to run this model on my computer. Okay, you must follow the recommendations of the meshing of uh, the, in the paper. Yeah, so we have here a mesh. You must see the statistics to be able to, to know if your uh, CPU can run this, uh, this amount of elements or not. And you must check out the quality. The skewness must not exceed 0 0.98. And because we have here a very amazing mesh, the skewness is very low. The maximum skewness does not exceed 0 0.98. It's very uh, small because here I have a very good mesh. Okay. Now is the deal. I'm going to name this as the external surface of PV. Okay as a wall and I'm gonna make this body as fluid so this is the zone I'm go I have only one zone and now this is the outlet and the inlet Okay, so that's it here, external surface of the PV. This plays the rule of the uh, PV itself. It is, does not have the thickness, it is just a face, and it is a part of this fluid domain. Okay, the issue, like I said, if you use two bodies, and uh, we have here interfaces, or contacts, the soil load does not work. So we do not have here any contacts. So let's continue. You will understand the differences between these things. The couple uh, minutes, we're gonna cover the differences, so don't worry. Now I'm trying to validate. I'm gonna use the PV cell only with the air channel to reach this okay and then we're gonna use the rips random rips to see the effect okay okay just reset yes double precision because I need a uh, high quality Calculation star task manager. I only have four threads, so the maximum. If you have lots of elements, you can uh, run use the threads you have.
We're gonna use K epsilon as recommended here. It's not recommended. They used uh, this model, so we're gonna follow their uh, setup just to validate it, and then you can use other models, of course. K epsilon RNG. And Trobin's intensity and everything is here. And sorry, this this condition is uh, 500 watt per square meter. So those conditions, summer day without clouds. Okay. Uh, we're gonna use the gravity. Why in we have here the gravity in 9.81, but it's the negative y because the inlet is here and the outlet is here. So. We're gonna use the gravity to see the effect of the gravity because this is a centrifugal pump or it's not a turbo machinery or uh, something that we have uh, the G is neglected. So we will include the gravity and here are the models, energy, of course, yes, and the energy equation. And it's not gonna be laminar, it will be Turbulence model and here are in G. Of course, you must uh, check out all the details here. I'm gonna uh, select the full buoyancy effects just to include these effects in the system. Please, you have to uh, check out the details of these selections by yourself in the theory guide and the user guide. Here, the solar ray tracing. I'm gonna only use it. You can use the solar cat later uh, if you uh, want. Please, uh, here the negative and the positive. I see some people do not care about the science, so you have to get the solar cat later and instructions to know exactly how to deal with this solar calculator. Lewind. You'll find here lots of things. You have to cover to cover these things, and also you can find it in the user guide. How to deal with these things? It's the same. Yeah, like I said, the negative and the positive. You have to know. Uh, what is the correct sign because I see people do not care about these things this affects the solar calculations I'm not gonna use it I will only use this uh, I'm gonna make Z1 and according to the paper it's just 500 the direct they did not uh, say anything about the diffuse I'm gonna make it zero okay materials we have fluid, it is air, and I have the solid aluminum. So now I'm gonna use the PV cell. PV, depending on the paper, we have 2330. Two three three zero, eight seven seven and one four eight. Thermal conductivity, one four eight six seven seven specific heat. Six seven seven. Okay. So now create. No, I'm not gonna overwrite the aluminum. Okay, six, seven, seven, and four, eight. So okay, just to close it, I only have here this zone. It's gonna the fluid. It's gonna be air. For the boundary conditions, I have the external surface that I used it. For the thermal, the momentum, no slip, standard, stationary wall. Okay, and here is I have a convection. I have a convection. The convection, where is the convection? The convection is uh, 8 watt 
per square meter Kelvin per exterior no convective heat transfer okay just gonna be eight and this is gonna be 35 Celsius according to the paper heat sink okay it's the environmental temperature and here are the material I have I guess to you should use it here because we could not choose it here so PV cell that's why I defined it the radiation is semi-transparent it's not opaque and here participate in solar ray tracing yes the paper showed that they use uh, uh, 0.7 alpha the absorption coefficient of the PV cell but I used 6 6 6 and here is 2 2 2 for uh, the PV cell the transmissivity is not high like the glass that's why I changed the things I only did not, did not use uh, 0 0.7 and use this at semi transparent for the outlet 4.5 and we have 5.5 uh, and the other diameter is this for the thermal is 308 do not participate in solar ray tracing. Why? Because I only one of the sun hits or oh, hit this wall. Okay. Okay. Here the interior is the interior, and the outlet pressure. Just make it thermal. The radiation. Do not participate. Momentum. Gauge pressure zero. And the diameter. And here. The same okay for here the wool fluid here I'm not gonna use anything just keep it and it is semi transparent but does not participate in solar ray tracing to know exactly where is this or where display this is the wall fluid that I'm talking about. Okay, so it is semi transparent, not opaque, but it does not uh, participate in solar tracing. Okay, okay, no dynamic mesh, the reference values. If you know exactly uh, how to use them, you can check this them out, but uh, it is not a flow around the cylinder or an airfoil, so I did not use this. Also, the methods here you can use the uh, paper's recommendation but anyway I'm not gonna uh, go to these details right now just I'm gonna initialize this so I guess here there is a very good convergence Negative 13 is very amazing. And now it's starting to calculate the solar flux. Yeah. We okay, compute the flux. Okay, we have here zero because there was no any no opaque surfaces, in and angular sources. So this means that the solar ray uh, ray model works fine. Uh, it works, I guess, only with the conformal mesh like what we have. We do not have interfaces or we do not have any non-conformal walls. That's why we're gonna hear uh, for the calculation activities we have uh, the auto save and these things if you want to make an animation I cover these things uh, many times so we're just gonna hit solve. It will not take time it will stop after I guess 68 reaches so this is a very simple model so let's see what's gonna happen
So, gentlemen, we have here after uh, 80 uh, iterations uh, or five, 85 iterations, uh, we have here the conclusion complete. So, let's see the graphics. Have here the contours. First of all, you check out if the uh, solar flux works or not. Solar heat flux on the internal uh, tour flow, yeah. If zero, nothing happened. Well, okay, this is a very good sign. The solar hits this wall. When we have here 3.03 .03, uh, to the power 2, this means that we have solar. Okay, and it hits this lock at this. Notice that we define this as the PV cell properties. So, okay, now is the moment of the truth for the temperature. So, wow, is this is the heat distribution uh, temperature distribution on the surface, the PV cell surface, and near the air channels. So, the maximum is 3.32 to the power 2. If you uh, use your calculator, it will be 59 Celsius. So the maximum here is 59 Celsius. So let's check. Check the paper. So as you can see here is 59 and here is the distribution of the temperature without uh, uh, without rips and this is exactly what I got here. Notice. Notice here the heat distribution, heat transfer distribution, gentlemen. Yeah. So it works fine. So no problem with the model at all. We have here a perfect match for this case. Okay. So now we're going to add the uh, cooling effect to see the maximum temperature of the PV. What's going to happen? Okay. So save your work, please. Call save project and then uh, close. Yeah. So this proves that the setup I used here is correct. You can use uh, some other snares up to you, of course, and check the results. Okay, I just duplicated the project. I'm gonna now add the heat sink. It's a random heat sink, and of course, I'm just. Uh, do, I'm just doing this to compare between my results and my simulations and uh, it's not gonna work for this model because he used a uh, different design, okay? So we have here what we did. Now I'm trying to include the uh, heat reps. Okay, I'm gonna use the PV cell only. Uh, here is the extrude. Okay, just delete this. And only I have here a PV cell. Okay, from this PV cell, uh, I wanna make the uh, heat rep, uh, heat sink. So YZ. Just print a plane and from this plane start sketch projection. This is the layer. I just want to include this in my sketch to start the drawing. You know, open the sketch and you'll find the deadlines and here the rectangle dimensions 500 
yeah and this is gonna be just three millimeters I'm making a very random model so here is okay I'm gonna make just two three fins here also at random positions doesn't matter now one rectangle dimensions okay then five and then modify trim trim this okay this is the first one trim by five and here is the second one where for the rectangle dimensions thin five five okay no problem and the modify trim why because I wanna uh, make an extrusion So the last rib here with dimensions thin and thin. Okay. And trim it. Okay. Go and uh, get out and uh, just extrude this sketch. Add material. I'm gonna see if the material frozen. Uh, reversed no both two five zero like this and generate. So we have here the rips is added, but here is add frozen. So this is gonna be add material. Okay. So now I have this cut to pull PV cells. You suppress this, I will only get the heat sink. Okay, this is what I want. Rename heat sink. This is the heat sink. Now go to uh, the same sketch uh, plane and make another sketch to uh, to use or to draw the other domain fluid domain. I need here to use the fluid domain. Fluid domain is one hundred millimeter rectangle. Be careful when you draw dimensions is 100 yeah and this is 500 okay this is but we're not done yet I have to include Uh, by the way, this line I don't wanna see it. I only use these lines, this, because I don't wanna make any overlap in meshing. So make a zoom. This is pretty important. I did this or not? I have line, 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 and this. Okay. I only wanna this 
areas. This is the area that describes the fluid. Okay. No. From this point to the last point. Kind of tricky. And this point, and on this point, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Do I have a line? I'm not sure if this uh, match uh, has a match or not, so just get out and try the extrude. If we face a problem, we're gonna fix it. Here is add frozen, not material. And the same both symmetric. Okay. Okay. I guess it works it works fine. So we have here the heat sink. Of course you can change the dimensions of the uh, heat sink, it's up to you. I'm just showing you the idea. Of the general idea we have here, the uh, these things. Now we have here a heat sink and the solid. Okay, but this way it is not gonna work. So what the problem is or the trick is, I'm gonna make this from new part. So this is it's a new part, but we have two bodies. This gonna work with the solar load model. So, if you do not do this step, you will face the message that says solar load model does not work in the existence of non conformal walls. Okay, I faced this last time and did not figure it out until the moment that I searched online. Just uh, here, make reset. Okay. So, so open the mesh. We'll find here a contact region, but it is not the interface, uh, the usual interface we know. We have here some connections. Okay, we do not, do not find here any uh, interfaces, and this is the part. We have heat sink, and this is not a solid. This will be the fluid. You can name it, and you can make it here fluid. Okay, and here is the mesh, the same size to compare, and 3.5, just to update. So here is the mesh and as usual statistics and the quality.
very high quality mesh for it okay the safe side and now this is the heat sink I'm sorry I did something uh, no heat selection heat sink and here is the fluid again we're gonna select the face the external face of the heat sink but we're gonna call it the PV cell okay PV cell or external surface yeah and the inlet and the outlet outlet and inlet if you look at the mesh you'll see here this is what I'm talking about we only have here the rib and surrounded by the air surrounded by the air I cannot make the full body here there is an overlap you will face okay so we have to only extrude this around the rib that's why I did not use this and also I do not use in 3d simulations the enclosure method because it does not give convergence, it causes a uh, problem in convergence. Okay, so close, start flowing. So, update the mesh. Every time, please reset the setup because. It's very important to start it from scratch to avoid any troubles and to avoid any warnings especially when you add a new zoom reset again Building the model Okay, filling dunk gravity Always see the coordinate Energy K epsilon RNG full buoyancy. Okay. Radiation. Solar ray tracing. Same setup. I'm just investigating adding the reps. So everything must be the same. Aluminum PV cell PV three three zero six seven seven correct three six seven seven one four nine one four nine 
Do not overwrite. Now is the time of the copper. Okay. Here is the cover. We'll find here two zones. The fluid is air. And the heat sink. Heat sinks, not aluminum, copper. Copper. Boundary conditions. Inlet velocity. The same. Half. Wow. Everything. Thermal, 8, radiation, do not, interior, interior, output, or outlet pressure, outlet pressure here, hydraulic diameter, all right, thermal, 8, do not, PVC, PV cell external wall convection eight three eight not aluminum semi transparent yeah you must get these details for your materials okay all fluid thermal semi transparent do not there is here a couple but I guess I when I uh, run the model the solar load did not uh, work uh, well so I made it hit plus but zero Semi-transparent, it fluid sink, yeah? Wall fluid heat sink, wall fluid heat sink, semi-transparent. Thermal, heat flux, okay, radiation, no, okay, flux, mm, I guess no need here to uh, use the cover. That's okay. Here is the deal, wall, wall heat sink. The wall heat sink, gentlemen, is... I know that we pull it here cover, so it doesn't matter if you use aluminum here or copper, but to be the safe side copper. For me, I did not uh, use anything here. And here is opaque. Opaque, not semi-transparent. Opaque, but do not participate. If you want to add the uh, absorptivity of something like this, put it. And we're gonna skip these things. Cover these things in details in the previous tutorials, influent, and you must see the best for your study from the theory guides and user guide. Do not always stick to the videos. The videos just show you the general procedure. It is not all the thing. So we have here uh, the MF flux BY because we have here an opaque material. Like I said, you will find it zero if you do not have any opaque materials. And we have here the energy. This proves that this works like a charm. We do not have interfaces till this moment. Or you will find here solar load does not work in existence of non-conformal walls. Just calculate and wait.
convergence uh, is considered from uh, negative 4 and so on, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So, uh, depends, of course, on the mesh. Convergence depends uh, on the mesh size and the Y plus, especially for the heat transfer and the fluid dynamics near the walls, you must calculate the Y plus for your study. Otherwise, you will find uh, the validation not working. Like I said, it's not as simple like this uh, tutorials or any videos. There are many things you have to do by yourself. The Y plus, you check many things and carry out the mesh dependence study. B these things enhances the physics or the uh, convergence of the simulation. German here, uh, there is a reverse a reversed flow, I guess. This is because of using the full buoyancy and the uh, gravity, uh, which uh, affects the the uh, end velocity direction. As you know, we uh, have from the bottom to the top the direction of the velocity, which is in the uh, opposite direction of the gravity which makes the flow reversed or recirculated. For example, if we see here, the velocity will find here some recirculation like this. I guess this is the cause of the reversed flow, but I'm not sure, of course. So it depends on the uh, heat sink design and the boundary conditions, and if you include the uh, gravity or fault buoyancy or not, that's why you have to be very careful when you deal with these things. It's not a joke, really. That's why it's better to use these models on workstations, because uh, I'm just using uh, my laptop. It's not a workstation. Okay, calculation complete. So let's see, it is predicted to see a temperature lower than 59. Full flux, full controller, internals. Okay, works, works fine. So this is the layer that, oh, I wanna temperature. So, wow, is 314. 314 means uh, 41. So we have decreased the temperature of the Pudu voltaic because of using the rib. So as you can see here, is the heat transfer. Yeah, 308, uh, okay. And here is this temperature just because of using the rib. Okay, so 314, so this is the decrease in the temperature, and of course you can try many scenarios, okay? So, like I said, here is not uh, the same because I used a different design, and let's see, you can see here just here 50 and here is uh, 49, here is the yellow, so it's around 40s, it is not in the 50s, this, okay, and also here is the 40s, so let's see here, yes, you can see the, uh, the walls, All the fluid, yeah, all fluid is cool, it's very cool, it's like this, 
it is all in red um, sorry it's all in blue like this and and that's it here unfortunately this model does not uh, simulate the effect of the velocity very well by the way uh, I tried to uh, change the velocities like the paper here but it only works if you use inner faces or the non-conformer rules as usual so here you only will find the effect of adding reps and we have just seen this this is be uh, better than using uh, no reps okay so I'm gonna show something right now for the uh, effect of the velocity. Of course, you can uh, try to you can try uh, some different procedures, but unfortunately, it is it has been confirmed that the solar ray tracing does not work if we use conformal uh, wall uh, non-conformal walls. And this, I guess, it is not uh, good. It's a very big limitation. We have to make the procedure I have just showed you. Here, I'm going to show you the effect of the velocity, and then we can uh, continue the tutorial. I'm just showing you the problem. Uh, I got the PV plus the heat sink, but I did not make I did not make the trick of the uh, new part no I here uh, here did not I did not use the solar ray tracing I just used the heat flux so let's see the effect of the velocity it really uh, appears and it's very awesome but we cannot use the solar ray tracing of course, if you can figure out this, uh, it will be a very awesome thing. Notice here that we have four bodies, heat sink, fluid, and PV cell. Exactly. But I did not make them as a new part. Okay, and then I go uh, to meshing, I went to meshing, and so on. And then let's see the solution. Here is half meter per second. Where a gentleman is the model general in the same settings models energy on uh, RNG and but radiation off. I did not use the solar ray tracing. The materials I defined the copper and PV cell, and here we have three zones. Notice that the PV cell is added right now. The previous video, uh, the previous simulation, I did not. Find it. Why? Because I did not use the non-conforming walls. We have here the boundary conditions. I get the inlet velocity. And every uh, thing. Okay. I just want to check something in the PV cell. Yeah. Uh, here is 877. So what you wanna the, the results you wanna see it is for 877 I missed with this it is supposed to be six but anyway this is not the problem okay if you wanna carry out this simulation make it at 677 exactly like the paper I just uh, missed this uh, here is the output pressure the same thermal not, not that we do not have uh, not that we do not have the radiation external wall thermal and here is heat flux I missed or I did not use the convection on purpose why because I only have here to put the 500 watt per square meter and I did not mess with anything else because no need to do anything just 
here is the wall PV that's it the wall heat sink nothing you will not find anything this is the uh, regular setup like any other video okay yeah we have here also a uh, couple you make uh, you can make it heat flux so yeah heat flux okay let's get the chance and i'm gonna make it six and read the simulation just for this video okay it will be better to uh, make it again because i wanna check it again 677 and okay 677 okay everything now is fine you do uh, we have here many walls please do not miss anything do not miss anything okay let's initialize we have here the interfaces on two contact regions so what if we use the solar ray tracing i will show you the issue any value any value say that uh, the wall of the pv has a radiation at semi transparent okay using any value initialize The convergence is pretty good, but yeah, warning excluding boundary. Yeah, because the solar load model is not supported with non conformer walls, this means that you will not find anything. Okay, there is solar energy, but just calculate. Oh, sorry, stop. We have to cancel the heat flux to not include it in the simulation. Sorry, we have here uh, the wall PV. No, this course is just gonna be zero. Do not participate. I have to do this. Do not participate. Semi transparent. Do not participate. We do not have any opaque here except the heat sink. Yes. Okay.
Ok. The heat sink is opaque. Yeah, opaque. Show to be. So because we have an opaque. Yeah, let's calculate. Okay, until this finish, I'm gonna show you this just to save time. Do not, because I cannot use all these things at the same time. Here is the simulation using heat flux. I already have it. You may stop this right now and you can calculate it if you want. I just want to show you what's going to happen. Okay. Okay. It's incomplete. Here, show me the temperature. No heat flux, just solar ray tracing. So as you can see, gentlemen, There are very small values, 3 point, yeah, I'm sorry, there is a problem now, okay, I'm gonna close this because it is loaded, yeah, 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 okay, just close this. Okay, let's see the solar flux. Okay, with this and here, all fluxes. Yeah, so we have here the wall flux. I guess it is negative, it is very small. Very small.
Yes, negative three. And of course, this is not what I want. That's why we have problems with this uh, type of modeling. Uh, again, uh, here is a radiation. The, yeah, even if this is higher than 500, I did not get the correct distribution. Notice? There is something wrong here, and I guess this does not make sense. Here is the wolf flux. Here is the temperature. Notice. This is not the correct temperature. So if you remember, this was 341 uh, Celsius, I guess, not cool like this. So I guess this is not correct. That's why it is not recommended to use solar tracing with the non-conformal walls. So this is the first thing here. Now let's get back to the heat flux. If you use the heat flux only, you'll find the uh, effect of the velocity is better uh, estimated. I'm sorry, you know, these models are very, very heavy. So it takes a lot of time, much time. But I uh, see it is a very good chance to uh, uh, let you see the whole scenarios. Okay, here is the heat flux I used, but using 877, not 677. So I'm not going to change it right now. Just save the time. So I use the heat flux exactly like what I uh, showed you. And here, results, of course, will be high. Here is the temperature distribution. Yeah, of course, we found that at the half point, uh, 1.5, here is the maximum is uh, 358 to the power positive 2. Uh, when I used a half meter per second, the uh, we I reached three seven seven. I guess it was a, it was a very high uh, degree Celsius. So this uh, proved that using the, the heat flux, not the solar ray tracing, I don't have, I do not have here any radiation model. I just used the heat flux on the external wall. So where is the external wall, here PFE external wall, thermal 500, and the inlet velocity is 1, 1 not 1.5, yeah, 1 meter per second, and here is the turbulence intensity, the thermal, okay. If you use the boundary condition of half meter per second, you'll find that it may reach 377. It will be very like this uh, shows the effect of changing the velocity. Okay, I could not uh, investigate the effect of the changing of the velocity using solar ray tracing. So you may find another way. It will be awesome. The issue, like I said, that load uh, solar ray, uh, load ray tracing, solar ray tracing. I'm sorry, uh, does not work with the conformal uh, non-conformal walls.
So now uh, I'm going to show you the solar ray tracing using the complex model, the full layers. But uh, to save the time, I'm not going to make everything. I just have it. Full PV air channel, solar ray tracing. And then we're going to use two types of heat sinks to see the effect of them. So let's open the geometry. So to sum up, we have uh, a very simple idea to use the solar tracing and we got the correct validation. And we can cool the PV cell using the solar ray tracing and the heat sink. Uh, but the investigation of the uh, velocity is not uh, working actually. So I use the heat flux idea. Okay, so we have here the model, the complex model, uh, the glass cover, and the PT cells, and the EVA, and uh, rear contact, uh, rear contact, yeah, and PVF, and I just extruded the air channel. It is just a... Yeah, I uh, extruded it from the face. I selected the face, the face here and I extruded this as you see it's very simple to extrude this but the idea is to make it from one part okay you must make it from one part if you wanna here you can exclude the part but you must do this to let the solar ray tracing work so here you just import the layers and the edit channel Let's see, air channel has a contact. This is the air channel. Here is the air channel, is, is the PVF or the tiddler exactly here. And then make them from new part. Then go to meshing. For me, investigating the velocity for PV cells, I guess it is not a critical uh, thing, so uh, you may use the heat flux idea, then you use the solar ray tracing as the optimum velocity. So this is the, uh, the solution for the problem if you face it, if you cannot investigate the velocity using solar ray tracing, just make the heat flux uh, method until you uh, reach the optimum velocity and then use the optimum velocity in the solar ray tracing and then change uh, the heatsink model. We have here the geometry is just one part, but it consists of many uh, sub parts. We have here connections, yes, we have just one connection. This does not mean that solar ray tracing will not work. No, it's gonna work. Here is the mesh, the same size, and we have here the glass, external wall, the same thing, just the face. And here the bodies select every body and name it. And here is the fluid, and here is the outlet and the inlet. The inlet, okay. After that, we get out and go to the setup and make some uh, everything. So let's open the solution. Okay, let's uh, see what I did in details. So we have here Y, negative 9.81, the same thing. For the models, uh, viscous RNG, yes, like what I used. And radiation is solar ray tracing, 500, okay. Okay, the materials, I uh, used all the materials we have exactly like what I showed you we have here the PV cell 677 yes everything and then the cell zones at each cell zone you define the material this is pretty important the fluid air 
okay you must do this thing class <clears throat> and the boundary conditions it's a very long list so let's see contact regions no the glass we have here the convection so no need here to define it you can define it again uh, okay radiation participate in it velocity yes the same things I'm just showing you interior 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 Walls. You want to let anything uh to find any uh thing from here you make it participate with flux zero with flux zero And that's it for the boundary conditions. Mission interfaces, just one contact region. This makes solar load works. So it works like this, or no mesh interfaces like the first simple case. And the, after initializing the model, I did not receive any warnings, and we got here the contours. Let's see. First of all, solar flux. Yeah, works fine. Notice that here we have plus, not negative. So this is the correct uh, value. Zoom, this exactly what we have. Temperature Ready heat transfer is a piece of work. So we have here this uh, using the uh, 314 we have here the 314 multiplied by uh, E to the power 2 so here, gentlemen, is the maximum temperature for the PV, uh, PV panel, not the PV cell only. Notice that now we are not going to validate this model against this. Cancel this because this is the simple. Now I'm uh, dealing with this complex model, all the layers except the ARC. So we have here no results. So this is the first result without any heat sinks. We have the maximum 314 to the power uh, 2. Okay. So let's close and see uh, the heat sink model. And I predict getting uh, temperature lower than 314 on the front face of the PV. Why? Because the heat transfer will occur from the PV surface to the heat sink, which is opaque. So I did this exactly. Let's see the geometry. The same trick I used, I make uh, the plane to a projection and then I uh, draw 
the uh, dimensions here of the heat sink I just one uh, made a one rib one rib here here this is one rib and then I extruded it and then another sketch to define the fluid exactly exactly the same idea but now as you know you must make them as one part fluid and heat sink This is the heat sink, one rib, and here is the fluid surrounds this. Close. Okay, for uh, the meshing. The same size and the same things just we added the rib just one rib is added and external yeah and in it and out it exactly like what we did and then the solution let's see I predict lower uh, temperature for the outside surface or external surface of the module this is the full module Okay gentlemen, we have here the same settings the model's energy viscous or every everything everything again the same but I added the copper for the uh, the heat sink the cell zones and here the heat sink I defined it copper it's very important like I said for the boundary conditions everything uh, as it is so let's check the walls wall heat sink so all heat sink here is gonna be opaque and participate in solar ray tracing or you can uncheck this by the way I used this for simulation I checked this and I let, uh, let it uh, participate and I did not find any change in the results okay I carried out two simulations one is uh, semi-transparent and one is opaque that's why I found not, no changes so you may of course change these things like I said you do what you want I'm just showing you what's going on Too transparent and everything like this everything is semi-transparent except the wall heat sink must be opaque or you can change it as you want so let's see the results after adding one rib okay Notice that here the maximum temperature is 319. We got that the maximum temperature without adding ribs is 314. Here is the maximum is 315, 19. I'm sorry, and no notice the PV. The rest of the PV is 312, 314. Okay and we have here 311 so we can see here the effect of adding one rib just one rib just a random rib so it makes disturbances and we have here a very uh, we cooled this part and of course by enhancing the ribs you will find lower temperatures we have here 3 
12, not 314. We have here 3, I guess, 18 because it is uh, close to the uh, solid of the heat rib of the heat sink. So let's see if we add. Let's see if we add the heat sink to. This is the heat sink too. I just added two uh, ribs, two more ribs. No need to uh, see again the details. I just added or changed the design. So let's compare this model to the uh, first uh, model. The full PV module without heat sink. 314 as maximum. Let's see here. Let's see the temperature. Yeah. Wow, man. <laughs> so adding three ribs and the heat sink, notice what is going on here. The many layers of the uh, photovoltaic, this half of it, or uh, this, this 314, and here is 310, just 310, just 311. So here is 315, uh, okay, and we have here is 315, and here is 317, and here is the maximum, of course, because of the uh, rib. This is the distribution of the heat. So this is the maximum temperature occurs here at the inlet. And here is the outlet. Why? I guess because the uh, velocity enhanced the uh, heat transfer. And let's see again. So as you can see, the photovoltaic now here is uh, cooled 39 and 310 and here is 312, it's not 314. So I guess this is the uh, disturbances because of adding a heat sink. So just hold. So gentlemen, we have here 314 as maximum and we have here, as you can see, this is a very cool. 3.08 uh, uh, up to half or more than half of the PV panel the temperature dropped and it's just a random heat sink okay so I did this to prove that uh, solar ray tracing can be used to uh, investigate adding uh, heat sinks of course you can uh, make a monitor and get the uh, temperature the every temperature of a specific uh, surface I guess you may use something like this for temperature and if I want to get the PV cell temperature or anything you just make this and report 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 and print to console and print surface and you can click OK you will find the monitor that tells you exactly what the temperature or the average temperature is or you can get the temperature or at each layer and uh, get the average of it but here it is just 314 I'm telling you this to do with the other simulations just to get the uh, average temperature if you cannot make it and that's it so in this video we showed the very simple case and we did it, uh, it perfectly then we uh, used the complex model and without uh, the heat sink and we used then uh, two types of heat sinks. Uh, the more ribs you use, uh, the better the heat transfer. 
and the uh, the cooler the food will take will be. Also, if you cannot uh, investigate the uh, velocity, do not use solar ray tracing and use the heat flux uh, method. This is the heat flux a method you will find the uh, contact regions works better so the investigation the velocity will be better so get the optimum like the paper and uh, then use it for the solar ray tracing okay i wish this helps you thank you uh, very much i wish this uh, you find this uh, very helpful please do not stick to the videos you always uh, must read and get uh, materials and get the research papers and read the details okay so thank you very much i'm sorry this uh, video is very long